Welcome to Up On Game presents Taylor Scouting. Coach Randy Taylor is bringing his 40 plus years of knowledge to you. This is Taylor Scouting. And now here's Coach Randy Taylor. This is Coach Randy Taylor. Coach Taylor with the Up On Game Network. Up On Game presents Taylor Scouting on YouTube. You can find us on any of your podcast sites, uh, iHeartRadio, all those good podcast sites. Uh, I am going to talk football with a, a guy that I admire, and, and I'm going to introduce him in a second. But uh, we're going to talk about the recruiting process. We're going to talk about football, high school, college, everything about football. We're going to talk about uh, even even things like motivation and and uh, relationships and all those things that are attached to this sport and everything that uh, this young man Malik Fig James does for a living and, and has done really well with his brother Milvon and and this is a really great family. Are there any other brothers? There's another brother in there. Um. Yeah. Yeah. No. Um. You thinking about it? Is our um. He's not our biological brother. Oh, he, okay, um, but, but he, he I, yeah, he I've seen us, him. Treat this exactly as if we were brought up in the same house. Yeah, I, I have seen you guys all together on, on about every football field there is. Yeah. Today we are with uh, Fig is his name. He goes by Fig. He's well known in this business. He, he and his brother uh, run, operate, and have started an unbelievable organization called premium sports and premium sports is a seven on seven organization a recruiting organization tell them tell me a little bit more about premium fig um premium was um it started as a, um, a college project for myself um at the university of nevada uh, my junior year um i had to create a business um within my hometown and um the business was a after school recreational um, business with training and development, with uh, resources to help kids, you know, uh, become athletes, student athletes, and uh, you know, with low goals and everything like that. So I did this as a junior, and um, as I became a coach years later, I was presented the opportunity to coach a seven on seven organization, and I just happened to have the name and the vision already, and um, so my brother, December 9th, I'm sorry, December 16th, um, he and I were working on another organization and we decided just to launch premium uh, with the division of Adidas. And, um, you know, we shot that through and uh, we haven't looked back. You know, I'll say this. I think that uh, in my mind, it's a positive one and probably one of the better organizations, a positive promoter of football in Southern California and especially with black young men who are using football to get ahead. Is that how you see it? Um, yeah. Um, but not just, you know, also about football. We, we we try to create lifelong relationships. Um, I think relationships is the key with the way the world, the world is ran now. Um, football only goes so long. You know, you have a ton of kids who go on as top guys and don't get drafted and they don't know what to do with themselves. We try to let them know that you have brothers and relationships throughout this process with premium. We can lean on us to do things currently um, in the past. I mean, currently um, and in the future. And, um, you know, you know, we, we wouldn't hire some of our athletes to run this program. It's just we just want to build it on, uh, you know, kids who need opportunity, rather they're minorities or, um, you know, uh, the, the typical, you know, successful, um, you know, Caucasian American. Um, camaraderie and relationships is everything for us. Yeah, it's it's uh, it's an impressive group, uh, Fig, and I and I have enjoyed watching you guys and and uh, getting to know you a little bit better. What is, is there a philosophy and goals? You've you've said some really important things already about relationships and why you started. Is there a a phrase of philosophy and goals for premium sports? Well, one of our many phrases is, is like we we everywhere, you know. Um, and what I mean, we everywhere is you know. When I when I think of premium, the word premium means for me the best of the best, the the top, right? And that lets 
all my athletes know, whether they're freshmen, JV, um, varsity starters, that we have a presence of success everywhere throughout the country. Um, you are top quality. Um, we everywhere also, you know, for us means, you know, we have athletes throughout all of Southern California um, playing for us. You know, we had kids driving from as deep as Oxnard, Palmdale, um, Northern California, all the way down to Chula Vista, to Tijuana. You know, so we have a presence throughout the whole Southern California um, and a bit in Northern California. And then um, last but not least, we're everywhere. Is, um, you know, we have kids in college programs throughout the country. Um, typically, you have a lot of 707 teams who are based out of one region or based out of one state, and their kids simply flock to that state because that's the only reach that they have. For our athletes, our athletes are national recruits, and everyone uses the, you know, the phrase nowadays so loosely with national recruits because you pick up a national offer. Um, I don't believe that. I believe a national recruit is someone who can survive and compete in a national region. And on top of it, they typically go. And um, for us, we've had kids at Notre Dame, Florida State, um, Florida, uh, Boston College, uh, you know, every school in the Pac-12, most schools in the Mount West, um, Ohio State, Texas, um, Maryland. You know, there's not many, you know, organizations, um, especially out West, who has that reach. Um, as far as philosophy, it just, you know, each one teach one. We want to sit there and get better every day, every offseason, um, not only the players, but the coaches. When our coaches develop into better men, better fathers, better mentors, we want our players to develop into better players, um, you know, better students of the game. Um, we want those, them to understand that this is a stepping stone and a tool to be successful in life. Um, you know, you, you may have a 25-man roster, and we're fortunate enough to have eight teams or organization in high school. Um, every kid in that roster is not going to go pro. You know, they're, they're, they're not, you know, and, you know, every kid in that roster is not going to go D1. But how do you use these relationships to continuously put yourself in a good space, in a good place, right? And so we just kind of preach those things to our young man. Um, we let them know that, you know, some struggles are different than others. Um, you know, you always got to be humble and thankful. Um, it's a ton of things we can sit here and touch on when it comes to the organization. Um, you know, I'm 34 year old today. You know, when I got into this game, I was, you know, about 26, 27. Um, and a lot's changed for me with the way I view things and my approach to things. And that's just a testament to what premium has done for me as a, an adult. That It's grown me. It's grown me to, you know, allow me to see, um, things in a different view. And I know if it can help an adult, it definitely can be beneficial to a, a young man that's, uh, you know, trying to figure himself out, trying to grow himself and try to become the best person um, and athlete as he wants. That's great. Now, now, are you saying that today is your 34th birthday? Oh, no, not today. I'm, <laughs> I'm, a, I'm a Libra. My birthday is in October. Okay. Yeah, because I forgot to send the cake, man. I, I uh, will there get that is. out to you. <laughs> hey, hey, uh, Recruiting is a big part of this, and you've talked a lot about the, the other stuff, the important stuff. How, you've been impactful, and you and your brother have, with in the recruiting world. How does that work for your organization? Um, being consistent, um, being persistent, um, and consistent. I remember when I first got in, I did something that was typically unusual for a West Coast guy. I used to wake up three times a week. Um, about 4 a.m. And I used to call the coaches back east. That's typically when I could catch them walking to the office or, you know, transitioning to the uh, facility or, you know, getting out of weights. And I was able to buy some of their time. And that's what allowed our organization to have the reach across the country um, because I've just been persistent, persistent, persistent. Um, today, everyone travels now. Um, but, you know, when we first got into it, we were one of the few organizations that traveled out east and down south and um you know you know everyone wants a clemson offer and everyone wants a georgia offer um so we just kind of took the kids out there and showed them like this is what it looked like could you generally you know be here could you live here um so you know for us it's like we just kind of built relationships by just pushing it we traveled a lot we put a lot of our money up and traveled uh from year two um we would uh fly our oldest team out to one trip across the country and it'd be probably like twenty four to thirty thousand dollars we'll spend out of pocket. And um, 
you know, we'll hit like five or six schools, myself, my brother, Millie, Ed, Matthew, and we'll just try throughout the country, you know, just build relationships. And those relationships are still, you know, huge, short program. And, um, you know, to our high schools and our, our, our kids today. Um, as far as just like the recruiting standpoint, we just try to sit here and push the best prospect as possible. Um, we have wins and we have losses. You know, there's some kids who don't sign, but we have more wins than losses. And um, typically if a kid's in a position to be academically squared, he has the measurables um, and he has the tape, we, we put him in a decent position to be seen. Rather, it's from a Division One Power Five to some form of, you know, continuing their education or athletics career. Um, not lying to schools, not manipulating the situation, let them, you know, you know, think they got a, you know, uh, you know, a, a, a dime when it's really a limit. We just try to pride ourselves on just putting quality athletes out and um, making sure our kids are, you know, students and we're well prepared and understanding um, of how college uh, program, uh, uh, college athletes should be in a program, whether it's academically attacking the weight room, attacking study hall and things like that. Um, I think that's kind of helped us um, gearing year out. Um, you know, we we we're, we average of a close to 30 plus D1 guys a year. Um, we're well over um, like sending over 200 kids division one in our time at, uh, you know, Inglewood, I mean, not Inglewood High School, uh, premium sports. Um, so, you know, it's just building a relationship has been as transparent as possible and just being honest and uh, just, you know, getting the most out of our guys. How, how have you worked with the NIL and the transfer portal? Has that been, it's new, relatively new. Has that been an adjustment? How does that work? Um, it, it, It's been an adjustment, but um, I'm healthy. I'm smart. I'm understanding and I understand leverage. Um. So I get it. You know, uh, one thing I just kind of push my athletes to understand is to not just jump in the portal without a plan. Um, you know, try to align yourself with a program, uh, with your high school coach or myself or whoever you feel that will be, uh, you know, helpful in your transition. Um, do not leave or jump in a portal without having a conversation with your head coach and your position coach and your coordinator. And, um, you know, if, if athletes feel like they're being pushed out, uh, by their head coach or whoever, um, hold them accountable and make sure that they have you guys set up um, with a tra you know a transfer. You know, if you want me to leave your program, if I'm coach, if I'm playing for Coach Larry at this university, he wants me out. Coach Larry, you want me out? I have no problem leaving because I don't want to be anywhere I'm not welcome. But you're gonna help me find a school. I'm not gonna be stuck in this portal. Um, and if you don't find me a school, then I'll sit here on this scholarship that I signed and I'll just be a student. And um, it kind of just go from there. Um, but the portal's definitely been beneficial um, for a lot of programs and a lot of players. You have players who, you know, outplayed their level of competition. Um, you have some kids um, who, you know, were allowed to, you know, be compensated on their um, ability, athletic ability, which probably was huge for their families and, and their household. Um, I'm a fan of the portal, I'm a fan of NIL. Um, I think it allows everyone to, uh, be in the best situation and the best positions possible for themselves. Yeah, this is a, uh, the, the schools get a lot out of these young men and, and their families. And, and so I, I think it's, it's going to work itself out to be a really good thing. You know, there's some rough spots to it, but uh, I, I think guys like you who have the kids best interest at heart uh, can help them in all those different areas. No, what definitely. advice Go ahead. No, go ahead. Go ahead. What advice do you have for parents? Um, ask the hard question. I actually had um I had a call with one of my parents last night, and um, uh, she and I are really really close. Uh, but the conversation is more so just giving her guidance on how to go about the program and, and the recruiting process. You know, I kind of told her when when you're in the process of making deals, right? Because that's ultimately what the recruiting comes down to. It comes down to deals. You know, if your son comes here, I would ensure him that he graduates. Or if your son comes here, he'll get this number. Or, you know, um, try not to be so friendly. When you're in the process of making deals with coaches or um, negotiating terms or, you know, just hearing out what they say, try not to be so friendly because when you're in the process of being friendly, you typically tend to give away 
a percentage um, that you wouldn't give away um, if you weren't cool with them. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, try not to be so, you know, open and, 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 and cool. Go into this, uh, and I'm saying to be an asshole, but, you know, treat this like business the whole way. And then the minute you sign and the deal's done, then we can go ahead and be cordial and, and overly friendly. Um, example, you know, I told her, like, I know you take all these visits. And um, she expressed to me, you know, all the coaches recruiting her child. And I'm like, you know, next thing next, you know, the, the coach's wife's going to be, you know, hanging out with you and getting a, you know, glass of wine and, and, and talking to you about this and how much fun that she has in this town. And you're going to feel that she's your friend. You're going to feel like she's your friend. You're going to feel like you can trust her, you know. Um, and in the process of that, you're going to be blinded to a lot of different things because you feel like you got a relationship with her, that you wouldn't have been blinded if you went into this with tunnel vision and said, like, look, hey, I'm here for business. You know, I also told her, you know, don't get on campus a million times. You get on campus a million times, you see a place, you get a lot more comfortable. Um, you tend to not pay attention to certain things anymore. I advise her to, hey, get on campus, you know, till you're top, you know, 10 schools twice. And then from there, um, you know, the third visit is go to your top three. You know, um, like I said, if you get onto USC's campus eight times, nine times, you get to start knowing everyone on campus. It's going to naturally feel right uh, because you put yourself in that position and that place of comfort. You may look past all the other things that is alarms and red flags, whether it's depth chart or whether, you know, um, you know, they have four guys in position up there. You just think coach is so cool or this person's so cool that they're not going to screw me because you had a few drinks with them or you had brunch with them or they know you by first and last name. They give you your your, your, your youngest child a high five a few times. Nah, so I kind of advise parents to be cautious of the situation. Um, definitely be understanding that what you want and, be you know, be firm with it. You know, then the friendly things will come on the back end if it's meant to even be. Yeah, that that's such great advice. That that, that uh, I I don't think I've ever thought of it that way, but it is absolutely true that that being on a campus when it's easy it ends up maybe giving you a different or a rosier picture of it, and and you don't then look at all the other options. And that's For a 100%. great. Yeah, I mean, great if you look at like you and I, and you and I, we're we're cool, right? Yeah. Um, if you and I were to do business and I'm saying, look, I want 60 percent. and You adamant about only giving me 50. Right. We can settle up at 55, but you only may be willing to settle with me at 55 on the strength of us having a relationship prior to this. If you didn't know me from the guy down the street and you was firm at 50, you're not going to budge at 50. You're going to say, look, we're 50 50 in this. We're not 60 40. And if it doesn't work out, the deal going is going to crash, right? But if these parents get up there and they're so locked in with the coaches, they ain't been and talked to them fifty million times and hung with them fifty million times, and they feel comfortable because they've seen them, they get to know them, and they know them by first and last name basis, and they're texting, they gonna give a little bit. Oh well, coaches asking for for sixty percent, they'll be willing to give up that sixty because they feel like they're doing what's in the best interest of of, of the parent. The coach is doing what's in the best interest of the parent. And they're not getting over them. But at the end of the day, you got to sit here and look at it and say, I got to do what's in the best interest of me. If I'm starting at 50 percent and I'm stuck at 50, I, I'm not budging on 50. Now, if these people don't be willing to move their 50 and give you a better percentage or even match your, your percentage of 50, it might not be the best deal for you. Right. Because they're not thinking what's best for you now. They just think all is best for them. So mm -hmm. with that being said, it might not be the best situation or the best fit for you. But if they're willing to move or stay locked into the number you want or even go below, now you can open up. Now you can lay your hair back. And then after you sign that deal or that NIL, right, or, or, or that, you know, LO, you know the, the letter of intent, now you can sit there and become friendly with them because the job's done. You know, the, the, <clears throat> that's all so true. And I, I look at it from the college coach's point. And when we're sitting in that meeting, the staff room talking about a player, we want to have that relationship so locked in that they can't say no to us. And that's 100%. kind of what you're, you're talking about. And that and that's I'm just, just making so, sure my parents treat everyone evenly. Yeah. You know, it's a, it's a lot of programs out here, man. Um, whether it's 
group of five or FCS or power five that our young men on the West Coast don't take advantage of uh, because they're so caught up on staying on the West because they've been in the West their whole lives and the schools out West, they visited more. Yeah. So it's easier. And I'm and, I, and look, I'm, I'm talking from experience. You know, I, I went to Cincinnati. I should have stayed at Cincinnati because it was a good situation for me as an adult. I look at it, but I was just so comfortable with being back West. I went to Cincinnati and transferred to Nevada where faces were more familiar. I knew the coaches a bit more, you know, I knew Dante Williams, right. Dante Williams was my coach in junior college. Then became a coach at Nevada. It's easier for me to go to Dante because of the relationship I had rather than stand at Cincinnati, who was a BCS program in the Big East at that time and had guys drafted left and right with Travis Kelsey being my locker mate. He and I were number 18, sat next to each other, and Jason Kelsey and Marty Gilliard and Isaiah Pede and, and Armand Benz. So many dudes on that roster became NFL guys playing in that conference where I could have sit here and actually had a great experience, not only winning more games, playing on a bigger stage and just having those relationships in the Midwest. But instead I came back West because it was the easier decision. It was easy because I had that relationship. All my parents understand and my players understand. Stop visiting these schools as ninth, 10th, 11th, or maybe 11th, but ninth, 10th, three or four times. You're going to become comfortable with that school and make an easy decision. I talk to parents all the time and they tell me, oh, well, you know, we're looking at Oklahoma. We're looking at West Virginia. We're looking at Georgia. I said, okay, yeah, you're going to Oregon. Yeah. But we're not going to Oregon. I know you're going to Oregon because you've been there five times already. You've been to these other places once. It's no way you're going to go there. You don't know. Them. But they have only been all these places once and kept it even. And you go into the first meeting, you keep it business. You do more listening and less talking. You take your notes. You don't get friendly and you go back and review your notes. You cross-check everything. It makes sense that some of these other school situations are better than the schools out west. But since you're going to visit that university four and five times versus you're going to visit the university once, you're blinded by, I'm comfortable with them, I know them, although this don't make a little sense. He ain't going to do me like that. He my partner. Coach, these kids think these coaches are their friends. Right. Oh, that's my coach, Coach Blah, Blah. That's Coach Johnson. That's my homie. Coach Johnson ain't your homie. Well, Johnson is working and doing business. He's trying to sit here and sign the best class to become recruiter of the year. He's trying to get those bonuses that is that's, that's in his contract, right? And he's also trying to level, level himself up to go from a position guy to a coordinator, from a coordinator to a head coach, from a head coach of a group of five to a head coach in a power five, and then eventually get to one of those programs like, you know, a Oregon who doesn't fire. They typically hire within or guys transition out. At SC, you have to do completely bad for multiple years to get fired. A um, Alabama, where you know Saban's been there, you know 10, 15 plus years. Uh, Georgia, where Kirby's smart. Those schools, if you do well, you don't get fired because you're, you know, you have all the resources. You're typically going to win a lot of games, or you go to those schools like Ole Miss. As long as you continuously sign good classes and you win, uh, you know, you compete for conference. You know, like Josh Heifel's job secure. He won't be fired no time soon as long as he keep winning nine games, eight to nine games going bowling because the expectation right now in, 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 in on Rocky Top is a national championship. It's get us back to where we were, and that's winning. So now that's what these coaches are looking to be become. They're trying to get one of those job securities rather than, a, you know, Coach Ken Wilson at Nevada who's been there for, you know, played there and coached there and then went to Wazoo in Oregon. In his first year, he didn't have a great year, but – he may have three years to win. If he doesn't, he'll be on the hot seat. Yeah. You got all that right, Coach. I, I You're right on, brother. I, I appreciate that. What's next for the James brothers and premium or wh whatever the direction you go? Enjoying life. We um <laughs> we put a lot of work in. I've, I've, I've grown grades um, in my, you know, my, my young age. Um, I feel like I'm a veteran in this game now. And I'm still probably one of the youngest guys out here in Southern California, if not the country, doing it. Um, my relationships, you know, are countrywide from the north to the south to the Midwest. Um, I take care of my people. You know, one of my good, you know, guys from um, <clears throat> Midwest Boone, Coach Elliott out of Chicago, they came in for OT7 um, last weekend. And he and I hung out and we went out and, you know, ate and, you know, partied a bit. Um, 
15 years ago, he wouldn't have probably been as comfortable to do that in L.A., and I wouldn't have probably been as willing. And so I know when I got to that point where I could sit here and celebrate, you know, the out-of-town guys, um, I know I've done a good job by myself and my program and throughout the country. So now it's like, hey, you know, let's enjoy it, continue to, you know, grow myself as a coach, as a parent, as a child, and, um, you know, kind of shift my gear, not away from premium, but just into my kid now. You have built up the reputation and credibility that that allows you to be able to do that and, and work with these guys all over the country. And I, I again, I admire what you guys have done, and, and uh, I think you, you're on the right track. What, how do folks reach you? Um, Instagram, you have uh, premium sports underscore L.A. Um, you also have uh, on Twitter, premium sports L.A. Um, sports is with an S on both. Um, you know, my personal account, I probably want to, you know, want to share that here. Uh, but those that want to find <laughs> it, they can find it. Yeah, you know, we don't do that. We don't want to get everybody calling you. Yeah, from, uh... <laughs> yeah. the premium yeah. sports uh, underscore L.A. on Instagram and premium sports L.A. on Twitter. Outstanding, man. I appreciate you giving me some time and, and you've given us such great pearls of wisdom. And, and uh, I've learned a lot myself from this. So I really appreciate you being on. Fig. Sure. And sure. uh, we'll run into you again soon. Uh, Going to wrap it up now for uh, Up On Game Network, Taylor Scouting. Uh, you can watch us on uh, uh, YouTube on the Up On Game Presents. You can see us on uh, iHeartRadio or any of the podcast areas. Uh, please follow us uh, and review me on, on, on this show and our shows. Uh, we look forward to spending more time with you guys uh, on our next show coming up down the road. Thanks, Malik, Fig, James. I appreciate you, brother. Appreciate you. Have a great day. You too.